I've got these rather old and disgusting looking dining chairs which I'm going to be repairing because they're super comfortable to sit in. So I'm just removing the screws from the seat base. As you can see, the base is in quite poor condition. And then I'm going to just remove the armrests. So just take all the screws out. I've put all the screws in different bags. So I've got the backrests in one, the seats in one, and the armrests in the others. Just so that I know how to put it all back together. Now normally this would be a, a sew. As you can see, it's got a top and then it's got the side piece. But I've decided I'm not going to sew it. I'm just going to be doing it with staples and just laying it on top. I've removed the seat and now I'm going to prepare it to, to cover it. So on the back of these ones, they've got a piece of cardboard. So I'm just going to remove the cardboard from the seats. And then I'll be putting the wadding on. So I'm not removing the actual material, so I'm going to be covering over the material by putting the wadding and then the actual covering over it, which is the coarse crushed velvet which I'm going to be using to cover the chairs. I've cut my piece of wadding to go around my seat and I've left a 5 centimeter extra distance on the sides over here so that I can wrap it around to staple into it. And I've done the same with the crushed velvet. And now I'm going to just put that onto the chair. So I'm just laying it over the top of it and checking to see that all the sides have got equal amount of material to go around. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the wadding and putting a staple in on the sides just to keep that in place. I'm using one of these air pressure staple guns. So I've put one on the four sides and then I'm just turning it over to check that it's all nice and smooth. So it's all smooth lying in place and now we'll put it on the material again and I'm going to do the same thing with the material and then checking to see that I've got it lying smooth before I put the rest of the staples in so now we're just going to go all the way around I'm putting the staples at a little bit of a distance to start off with and then I'll put the remainder in to make it so that it's all smooth everywhere. So I'm just doing a few on the one side and now I'm going to rotate it to do the other side as well. And the same on the other side. And then I'm going to just check so it's all looking nice and smooth. So now I'll complete it by going a little bit closer and pulling all of them because as you can see if you don't put the staples close you get the material or the ridges going a little bit indented. But when you pull the material all together and staple it, you get a nice straight edge. When we go into the corners, what I like to do is I like to trim the wadding down just at a bit of an angle like that, so that it's not so bulky to try and get through. I'm just going to trim that off. So we got it like that. You try and go as close to the corner as you can so that you've got your corner when you've cut your wadding off, that you've got 
when it turns over, it turns over to make a nice corner. Once you've finished stapling everything down, just trim the edges off. And now we're ready to put the backing on. So now I'm going to be putting the underside on. Now this step is optional if you want to cover up all your work underneath, which is why I'm putting it on. So I've cut all my pieces of material to the right size and for myself personally, I like to start in the front of my seat and reverse the material so that it's lying off the seat like that. So when it comes to stapling, we're going to staple all along here so that when we flip it over, we've got a really nice straight edge on this side and then we staple the rest down. So I'm just placing a few staples on it just to make sure that I've actually covered the material. So that when you turn it over it gives you a nice clean edge. So now I'm just going to put a few more staples in. So we've got a nice clean edge. And now we're just going to staple the rest of it down. Turn it round and over like that. So once again, I'm just putting one in the corner here just to keep it in place. So now I've secured the one corner there and I've pulled my material and I'm going to just put one in this corner to start going around for the corner but I'm not putting a lot of staples in I'm just putting one in each corner just to secure it and now I'm securing the corner and pulling the material tight now I am doing the next corner so just make sure that you're covering all your your workings. And now we're in the next corner and once again just securing that. And now we can place the staples all along the sides. So we're on the last piece at the back and then turning it under. And securing it. Last corner. And now you can just staple all the way around everywhere. And there's the bottom placed onto your cushion. So it gives it a really nice, neat look. Unfortunately, no matter how we've tried to remove these caps, whether it be bashing them with a hammer or inserting a screwdriver into that small, tiny little hole over there, they just will not budge. So I'm going to have to upholster around the backrest on the chair. Unfortunately for me, because we can't get the backrests off, I'm going to have to do these by sewing them onto the backrest. So what I'm doing now is I'm just sewing so that it goes round. So when it goes over the backrest, it moulds to the shape of it. So I'm going to do that on the one side and I'm only going down as far as it will go over 
the backrest so it's I'm only going down four centimeters on the one side and I'll do the same on the other side then we'll keep my cotton attached because then I've got to start sewing down the sides so I've got my material with the right sides facing each other and now I'm just going to sew those curves in very difficult to see black on black but I've sewed the curve going around like that and then I'm going to attach this to the chair and I've done that on both sides. I've pinned my wadding in place and now I'm going to put the material on top. I've placed the backrest on and now I'm going to be pinning the sides of it so I can sew it. And I'm going to be sewing it by using the ladder stitch or invisible stitching so that you don't notice it. I'm just going to sew all the way around. So I've got it all pinned in place and I've put the seam on the outside so that it's just holding it in place so when I sew the seam will go onto the inside or the edges of the material. I'm going to just do the ladder stitch all the way to the end on the sides. I'm using a circular needle to do my invisible stitch and as you can see it works out quite nicely. So the invisible stitch is just the ladder stitch so as long as you're going directly opposite at each point and pulling it, it'll close up the gap quite nicely. Make sure when you're closing your gap that you remove all the pins from the wadding. For the armrests, because they're in such bad condition, I'm actually going to be removing all the material on them. I've removed all the material and the old sponge off my armrests and instead of using foam to go on top of that. What I've decided to do is I've taken some wadding and I'm going to be using a triple layer of wadding to put on top of that. And I've taken two pieces and I've glued them together by using this spray adhesive, which is a contact spray. So you've got to spray on both sides, wait for it to get a little bit tacky and then apply pressure to it and then it'll stick together. So I'm going to be applying that to the wood and to my pieces. And the third layer will go all the way around the armrest. So what I've got now is I've got my piece of armrest and my wadding and I'm just going to be tracing around that and cutting that out so that it fits exactly on top of the armrest. My piece cut out now. Now I'm going to be gluing on both sides to stick the wadding to the armrest. And then just wait until that gas a wee bit tacky and then you can stick them together. So the glue is all tacky now and now I can just glue them together. Now we've got quite a nice thick padding for the armrest. So I've got my pieces, I've got the third layer and I've got it all glued together. So now when I'm putting it on I'm actually going to be taking this layer down very very close to the actual wood so that I don't have all this bulk in there. So I'm going to be cutting this all off. So I've cut it all off and now I'm can get to staple it all closed. I'm also covering all my workings underneath the armrests like that. So this is what the legs of my chairs look like and the underside so I'm going to be sanding those. So this is one that needs to be sanded back and this is one that I've just finished doing. It's quite a big difference to get rid of all that rust. So now I'm just going to do that to all six of my chairs. I'm taking the footrest off as well so that I can sand this properly. To paint all the feet and the leg of my chairs, I'm going to be using this product and it's called Super Chrome. I haven't really used it before, so I'm hoping for a good result. So just shake it up nicely and we'll see if it, what it does. I'm 
Well, that's quite impressive. That's one coat and it really looks nice. It's not quite as shiny as what chrome is, but it's got a brilliant shine to it. But this is really, really good. Before you attach your cushion covers to the actual chair, make sure that you've located the actual place where the screw is going to go in and just cut the material like that so that the screw doesn't buckle the material when you screw it in. And now we just have to put the chairs together. And there are my dining room chairs fully restored.